Hey there, Shubi Doodlers. How are you doing? Uh, this is where we left off last time. I'm back in my um, Generation Moon workbook. Last video, I was trying to draw this fantasy uh, landscape of the International Space School on the Welsh hillside. Um, if you don't know anything about Wales, you might have come across them very recently in the World Cup uh, playing against England. <laughs> That's all the sore point, isn't it? So this is where we ended up last time and uh, I just didn't like it at all. But there are various elements that I do want in here, which is this old house, which has been there, you know, for however long, uh, up on the hillside. And then the space school has been kind of bought this house. Maybe it was derelict and they've done it up and they've kind of expanded it. And I know I want a big, long mirrored kind of wall of a building and, and a big apron out at the front here, this big terrace. That's very important. Um, but this just, it's a first its a first attempt. So sort of started thinking again. I didn't like the buildings. I thought maybe they need to be a bit more kind of futuristic and I didn't like them either. Um, and then I thought, let's just have this big wall of glass either side of the building and this kind of apron at the front. And then, you know trying different kinds of buildings and thinking let's take this more looking straight on at it whereas that that first one there's a whole kind of mix of things going on so <laughs> this is kind of quite a high view that's a, not quite so there's a whole lot of different <laughs> points of view and angles there and i think that's because i've tried to zoom in too close to it um, whereas i need to come away from the whole thing a lot more I've also uh, been thinking this is kind of the size of the book. It's called B format. Um, and now I'm thinking that maybe as you open up, there'll be the half uh, title page that says title page, but I would have a half title there. And then here I would have the title page, I think. And I was thinking maybe here I can have this landscape, um, um, which kind of brings the whole thing in. And, and then I can have everything up there and not quite worry about it having to fit into the rest of the book, if that makes any sense. So, uh, so I sort of started sketching this as a much more sort of shallow, long illustrate landscape kind of illustration uh, with a house in the middle. And I thought we'll have these two big glass wings on either side, just walls of mirror, mirroring the countryside. So you'll maybe kind of, you know, see the countryside reflected in that. It'll be green and blue. So these will be kind of classrooms and uh, dining hall kind of thing like that. And then it's a boarding school. So I'm going to want to have um, the sort of boarding area, the dormitories up here. And I thought I can split that into two buildings uh, and maybe uh, I'm thinking have a kind of an entrance kind of thing like that up at the top. So this is up above this um, big sort of dormitory, girls on one side, boys on the other. And then I thought the other buildings I can sort of tuck in around the back. It's a very green country Wales, so we have lots of trees and things. And they can just, you can not be having to see each building, but just these kind of chunky roofs and things like that. So, um, so then I thought, well, maybe I need to do a bit of a, an aerial view. Well, these are some other kind of sketches. And I thought maybe I'll have another building to the side there. That could be the pool, something like that. And then um, I thought, <laughs> let's work this out as a, a kind of an aerial view, a plan. What is actually going on? This is like a cross section. So this is the, the old main house. And then attached to it is these big glass wings on either side and behind it will be this kind of area which will be like a playground and then there'll be kind of steps going up um, where there'll be another terrace kind of thing outside the dormitory building so they will have lower uh, rooms there lower rooms there and then just a room of, on, above there so you've got 10 20 sort of 30 on each side so you can accommodate 60 kids in their rooms there and then up above will be this kind of rockiness although i'm sort of thinking of maybe having the um taking the, the so we want a little observatory and a radio telescope and mast with radio equipment and stuff like that 
I was thinking of taking that away from the top up here so it's not quite so high and it's much more of a stretched out illustration. I'm going to do a smaller version because <laughs> it doesn't fit in. So this is kind of an aerial view. This would be the main house, these two glass wings on the side and the dormitories above. And I thought the gym there originally, but now I'm thinking that's the pool. Um, and then these buildings to one side. So we keep working it, keep working it. <laughs> and so here is the house with the two uh, wings on either side and and I'm thinking that that's sort of in the middle sort of here there's a there's a little passageway down there and this is a glass fronted passageway here and there's kind of a major scene here um, where there are lots of photographs up on the walls here of famous astronauts and they'll be along there as well so this is like a little cloister kind of um, passage which you know covered a covered passage which goes right the way across the back of the house and then these will be classrooms which kind of open out like that I should be an architect really shouldn't I <laughs> and, um, and then this is very important I want this big sort of apron here and this is the kind of the terrace out here and big part of the stories happen with people leaning against the terrace looking down I decided I'd have a sports field down there, so we probably also need to have a some, some kind of stepped path down there as well. Um, and this is the drive, and we'll have a car park in there, hidden away with trees, and we want a shed for the gardener and things like that. Maybe some other little sheds hidden away here and there. So that's the house. Attached to the house is another big silver wall inside there that'll be the kitchen and then there's the dining hall and general hall um, which can then open out into the gym so you have one big big room there just an enormous kind of thing with a glass mirrored glass front so behind here we have the playground and we have steps going up to another terrace which leads into the two dormitories boys girls <laughs> And then there's a bit of hillside up at the back. And then there'll be a little kind of stepped path up to the pool, uh, which is not just a swimming pool. That's also used for sort of weightless uh, astronaut training, as it were, <laughs> in, in suits and things like that. And lots of diving and stuff going on in there. You're sort of getting to feel weightlessness and things like that going on in there. Um, and then from the playground here, we'll have a, a kind of a stepped thing down to a little kind of terrace here uh, from which there will then also be staircase going up to this main terrace so you can maybe have that going down to the pool you know, have a little thing outside there how about that that's working um, <laughs> like a little terrace outside um, and then we're also going to want to sort of come down to there and this will be on a level to the fab lab fabrication lab so that's all 3d printing stuff like that and all sorts of exciting um, stuff um, actually let's have I'm th yeah I was thinking I needed another one so I think so we'll have a science block uh, block there um, and then we'll have a, <laughs> how are we going to do that so we'll need a sort of a, more stairs going down like that a little terrace outside the space hall this is where they have sort of aircraft and you know flight simulation kind of stuff going on in there and um oh yeah and then we want to have on the <laughs> on the on the pen here we're gonna have um so, we, so we've got this sort of space here um I've, I've said that it was going to be a lunar lander but now i've decided it's going to be a moon rover <laughs> so they're all learning how to drive moon rovers and things like that <laughs> getting some experience so I'm going to come back to this and turn my light on and start sketching through here. And I think actually I have to turn the lights out here <laughs> so you can see better what I'm doing. Oop. So this is the basic um, shape of the book. Like this. Coming down there. And I want to have title. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and we can have copyright details all that up there so it just gives a kind of a feel for what's going on 
and I know that I'm going to want to have this apron thing here like that it's probably not quite so deep but anyways um, maybe have people leaning out against it and like that and then we can have sort of trees going off into there and I know I'm going to want to have this kind of Tesla <laughs> Tesla X with the doors open like that like that on the car park um, and bring that along there and we can have sort of trees all the way along and we can have sort of flags of the nations <laughs> all flying down the drive so this is going to be the drive down here and then we'll have trees sort of fading down to there um, and we're going to want trees on the other side of those as well and they're going to be sort of slightly concealing some of these buildings um, and then here let's draw we're going to want to have the house and we're going to do two on either side like that up and up and then either side there we're going to have a little across the top there and we have our windows and we've got a staircase at the front and one two three one two so that'll be something like that and then the roof and chimneys going up above it and then either side and get these roofs that are going like that and then these big glass panels like that and we're going to as i say we're going to see the countryside reflected in that in the background and then we're going to want to have we're going to have this kind of portal to the um dormitories up at the top like that and a sort of a walled terrace up above and staircase coming down and so this will all be glass and then you've got sort of doors down at the front and we want the roof going across so these are all going to be sort of flat roofs probably turfed or sedum or something like that or covered in uh, solar panels something like that. it's all going to be very high tech obviously and we can have some more trees and things obscuring what's going on there and then here we'll we'll see um you'll see the pool but we're not going to see that much of it so we'll see some steps going up there and we'll also see yeah so i'm going to have the that'll work yeah so i'm going to have the the observatory up at the top here We'll have a little sort of steps going on up there and we want to have um, a couple of radio dishes and a, a phone mast and things like that with dishes on the top um, and then this can come down here and we're gonna have some more trees so it's quite wooded <laughs> which means you can hide a lot of stuff so this here then will be the fab lab which is going to be like that and then we'll have a few more trees and things and underneath it again will then be the space hall and then you'll see another one on the side a bit lower again which is going to be the what what did i call it the science science yeah so let's put science um, space oh. <laughs> fab lab a pool and then we're going to want to have sort of mountains and things in the background sort of going off into the distance um, and we're going to want to have sort of rocky outcrops and things there and maybe bits of something maybe bits growing on there as well and I think that 
possibly got it. I think before it was just too detailed, trying to get too much detail in, and I think I can do this in a more of a kind of a landscapey kind of way. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> go to a, a new version of this and see if I can sort of tighten it up a little bit. Well, I think we can uh, zip through this uh, very, very quickly. So this is a, a, a new cleaner sketch that I can then start doing the ink drawing from. Um, I'm going to do some very rough kind of registration marks here. So these trees are just a little bit further in the distance. So I get them smaller leaf edges. And this is the really tricky part for me, I think. We've got these um, pillar kind of heads on there like that. And then we've got the kind of balustrade caps. And then this is sort of the, the hillside sort of falling away. So it's a great big terrace that's been cut out of the side of the hill. And we're going to want to have a kind of a base layer down there and we're going to want to have the complementary lower sections of the uh, the plinth part of the <laughs> of these basic um, th these are the sort of the main supports for the top lintel bits this is where it gets tricky so, <laughs> so I want that to come in and out sort of like that Oh, that just feels very wrong, that, doesn't it? But I think if I do something like that, it will sort of give a feeling for what's there. At least I hope it does. If I put another line in there, and I don't know what it is, but something about doing this has just kind of reminded me that we're going out to an Indian restaurant tonight. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's made me, uh, while I'm drawing this, it's just got my kind of juices going and I can taste curry. It's just a bit of a weird thing. <sighs> Can't think why there would be any association between this drawing and curry, no. So that's going to be the, uh, the kind of the, the hillside kind of falling away down at the front. And there'll be a, a field sports field down at the bottom now here i'm going to have the um this tesla x is just kind of parked just behind there like that we can have a couple of people here and these can be very kind of basic and they're just standing here having just arrived so i hope you'll be able to kind of work out Having read the story, be able to work out who these characters are. This is our hero, Glenn, down there. We want to have this kind of... The um, beginnings of this... Right, let's just do this doorway behind here. With columns. And an over-fancy doorway. And then I'm going to want to have these lintels above all the windows, making my finger go all crampy, thumb rather. Um, and then up above there, then we're going to have this another balustrade. So we're going to do a similar kind of, actually I'm just going to do little lines, not confuse it too much. And then we're going to want to have the uh, those are lintels, so these are the sills. And then we want the, the wall coming down there. And we can put in the, the edges of the windows there. And the bigger, taller windows downstairs. And then, <laughs> I want to put the window panes in. So they're going to be going, we have three rows of panes in the lower floor. And then we want the roof coming up and across like that. I'm going to make this a lead roof. And then we'll have these big chimneys on the top. 
And I had quite a business while I was sort of thinking about all this and thinking, well, this building would actually kind of have little extra wing things on the side. But I'm assuming this is a derelict building that they've come and taken over. And they've just knocked everything off the side, gutted the, <laughs> gutted the main house and built this thing, these big wings on either side. And so we can have sort of maybe two large bits on the side there. There. Then I'm going to change over to a smaller nib. So that was, this is a number three. This is a rotary tachygraphic 0 0.3. And this will be a 0 0.2. And so I get a much finer kind of um, line there. And then down here, I'm going to want to have these sort of uh, whatever they're called. There's a word for coins or something, is it, on the corners? And tiny little bits on there. We're going to want a line across there too. Oh, I didn't put the windows in on that one. So it's specifically mentioned on the drive, there are these kind of um, flags marking the driveway. Um, and some different nationalities and things and uh that's gonna be let's have a UK kind of thing, Great Britain. Um so that sort of in theory is China, I think. So I'm gonna add a bit of texture in here, I think. Um so my two heroes or, or um, hero and heroine, um one is English, or yeah, no, he is English, I think. He and the other is Chinese, and so I had this whole story planned out and everything. And then, well, I kind of sense world politics are getting a little complicated, and I'm thinking, oh, oh, but I don't think it's going to be a problem well I mean it might be by the time by the time the books are completely out and everyone will go this is ridiculous well politics might have completely changed and taken over from any possibility of how the story might play out but um, we'll just have to <laughs> see what happens I think we might have a, a, a bit, and an EU thing going on there and Oh, and we can just have a one like that. This will be. I don't want to fit another one in there. Um, and I just kind of assume there's a whole lot more flags going down the side there. And now I want more trees on the other side. And so we've got the playground kind of behind here. <laughs> and I'm going to have. Oh, I'm going to have a kind of line coming up like that, I think. there so we've kind of got a grassy bank kind of thing happening there and these will probably be rhododendrons <laughs> which have, certainly in north wales have um, kind of take it over the countryside I think. well I, I don't know if you've seen them quite so much now because they've i think they've had a big campaign to try and cut them all down and quite so many smothering the countryside they did go a bit wild and rampant and then we're going to have this sort of steps up here like that and the balcony out of the front and we're going to want that kind of thing happening again on this side I, th I think this coming out in a much wider view gives it a more, a grander feel to it as well, I think. And I think one thing I, I really wanted to avoid was to kind of make it a, like a James Bond evil villain lair. And there was one stage when I was thinking, oh, now what could happen is that 
it could be the person who built this house could have been a an old mining family and they've been slate mining and underneath the hill could be this great big slate mine and they were using the <laughs> the voids inside as sort of large rooms to or to create you know sort of build gigantic classrooms and spaces inside but then I decided no maybe not so this is going to be a wall up on the top so I'm going to need a sort of a pelmet I wasn't really thinking when I did that first bit there but anyway so that'll be a kind of a brick wally kind of thing like that and then I can put the the apex of the kind of doorway so there's a big atrium inside and so these will be the doors and then let's do it like that gigantic windows there and then we can have the roof which as I say I'm imagining is either very eco kind of turf roof or it's um, just covered in solar panels and I'm gonna have these very kind of square windows just to make it look very kind of functional and European in a way I'm always sort of amazed in Europe I, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah I'm always amazed in like Germany in particular I think um, <laughs> It, 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 when you get off the plane and go wandering around it's a bit of culture shock because you're in a different country but one thing that always gets me is that um, how Germans quite often have square windows which is a very unusual thing to find here in the UK and it's kind of quite uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, I think it's quite a sort of a modernist Thing, you know, sort of Le Corbusier, the architect kind of thing, um, which never quite translated across the channel into the UK. So we always have sort of tall, taller windows or big wide windows, one or the other. And now we can build these, put these other buildings coming down the side. And where's that? Just going to do that to remind myself we've got countryside. <laughs> got a little bit carried away there. Um, it's it's difficult drawing this uh, for the camera because I've got it flat on the table, and I would probably prefer to have it at an angle and a different position on the table as well. So sometimes my hand movements don't quite work the same way that they might if I had it in a more comfortable position. So the pen might slip and do kind of unexpected things. And again, we'll have this sort of reflection and we're going to have a bit of reflection of the building there as well I think probably like that and the and then we want to do these bits I think we might do that as well uh, should that be vertical I think it probably should um, and then we've got the hillside coming up here and I think we can have a little bit of make it a bit rocky and we're going to build a, a mast with a set of microwave dishes and things on the side like that and phone things up on the top as well and I think that could sort of come in there like that and then we're going to want these radio telescope things because oh, they're following satellites and they're 
doing international communications. Uh, so these are all really bright kids at this school who are all doing uh, really interesting things. So some are like going to be training to be astronauts. Some are, you know, sort of got an interest in. I shouldn't have done that. This is what happens when you talk. Some have um, a, you know, a bent for astrophysics. Some are, you know, natural mathematicians, and so they're all being encouraged in their ways. You can have another one here. So, you know, some are just obsessed with photos coming from the <laughs> James Webb Telescope, and you know, sort of out there at night photographing and putting different colours and f f wavelengths and frequencies <laughs> together to make incredible photographs and adding to the scientific knowledge throughout the world, uh, which is a thing that people do. It's not just NASA and people doing that. They, they put the satellites and the telescopes up there, but it's quite a lot of amateurs then get hold of the um, you know the raw data and start processing it themselves in their own different ways to um, suit whatever it is that really floats their boat. Uh, some little sort of spinny kind of thing going on there, and I think I'm going to leave it at that and start uh, painting it in. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos to help you improve your creative skills. So this is my little half pan watercolour set and this here is, they're all made by Winsor & Newton and this is called Neutral Tint, which is what I like to use. So this is going to be a black and white book, so I want black and white <laughs> illustrations. So I'm just going to paint a bit down here for these trees in the foreground just give that a sort of a general kind of tone and similarly over here so I feel I want to kind of build this up carefully um, this will be darker down below I think well I'll try that darker down below get some tissue paper so <laughs> I must be able to have to explain these what I'm using. So this is a Pentel Aquash water brush and the water is in the handle. So it kind of flows through. And then I'm gonna oh, I don't know. Not sure about this. Anyway, let's see how it goes. Um and then I'm going to paint that a little bit darker back there and then clean the brush and then let that fade up to there and then that can be darker there again to fade up to the top in fact I think this needs to be a bit darker there and fade down if anything <laughs> just to make it different we can have sort of shade behind the trees there haven't been terribly accurate so I'll just dry that and redo that little bit there while the paint is wet you can just get in there with a bit of kitchen towel and dip dab it and right that'll work I think it's quite difficult to get this because right, it's quite small and it's all uh, tone there uh, this could be quite a bit darker across the top I think it's probably all about blocking it in and then adding more tone as you go along to kind of bring out the Contrast is probably the word I'm looking for. I'm going to want something similar on the on these roofs, all the fascias, roof fascias. I'm going to want this kind of 
sky kind of thing happening in these mirrors. And I don't know how much is going to really show up on the scan, but we, <laughs> we can but try. And then I think we'll have these sort of darker down below. And then Yeah, that sort of works, I think. And then that wants to be, so we've got our heroes and heroines in there. It's quite hard <laughs> to see them. So I'll have them just in silhouette really there, I think. And then we've got the, um, so I'm going to assume the light is coming from this direction, in which case that would be a bit darker there. Coming around to there. Another bit of darkness in there. So the light's coming this way. I think that would be quite a bit darker down there. But we'll want it sort of. darker behind the tree there as well and then we've got some more trees up behind here which that's probably too dark but I'm I'm choosing that tone to <laughs> juxtapose there we are That. So you're almost not seeing that, don't you? I think I have to get this basic sort of tone in there and then start building the shadows a bit, a little bit later. So I'm going to put second layer of trees. So in between these two layers of trees, you have the drive, the long drive leading up to the house. I think I can bring them quite sort of pale up at the top there, I think. I'm just going to get a ruler across there so I can see what, yep, that works. So I'll get a bit more neutral tint in down here and just start sort of working it up into these trees so we get a bit of shade and tone. Now here you can see I've got too much on my brush so I have to wash it off. That's much too dark but I'm going to then just sort of push it about to uh, so it's darker at the bottom and then we get that kind of graduated tonality and have that around underneath the, the flags as well like that so i hope they're looking a bit tree like i have a feeling that <laughs> things that i'm when i'm close up to them and i'm like oh i'm not sure about that but once it's scanned and then actually put into the place and the illustration is put into place on the page where I'm intending it to be. So this is this is not a painting to go on the wall. It's an illustration to fit a particular page. And I think when it's on the page, then anything that I think is, well, I'm not quite sure about, um, will maybe suddenly kind of make a bit more sense because it'll be um, in context, <laughs> which is what it's all about really, isn't it? So we'll have a bit darker around there because those trees will be putting that into shade and there'll be a bit more sort of shade coming along there. Um, I think we want a bit more shade either side there really to bring the house forward as what well. I'm using that shade to bring the house forward um, a bit of shade underneath there aren't we and I think I'm not really going to paint this house I'll maybe put I don't like that kind of putting this trying to put like a stone texture in here but very pale I want it to be too obvious and then we want quite a dark base on the building. I'm just going to put a little bit of <laughs> shadow on this side. And maybe a little bit of 
sort of shadow underneath these roof fascias, which are, I'm assuming, are kind of leaning out over and above the windows. And I think we need to put some <laughs> shade in there. It's all just <laughs> trying to bring things <laughs> forwards and backwards and move things in into their sort of plain position, as it were. And of course, it's quite possible that I sort of thinking, yeah, that's the way to do it. And you're going, no. <laughs> that's not right but uh, that's the way it goes it's, it's my vision <laughs> that's how I'm seeing it so we want a bit of shade on this side I think from the so the this atrium entrance is slightly in front and then we'll have a bit of shadow underneath the roof there as well. And we're going to want to... Have these little windows darkened up. In the previous version I got very carried away with um, too much detail in the windows. Which I think is easily done. Let's put a bit of bit of shade underneath that. There, like that. Whether this roof ought to be a little bit darker, or a bit of sort of texture in there like that. Um, and now I'm wondering whether I can very carefully just kind of do, oh, not sure whether that works. I want a little bit more in here as well. It's getting there, I think. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll echo what we've done down here. So we'll have a bit of the sort of mountain bits and then wash them up like that and then we want to have the sky behind like that and we'll wash that in too. The thing is happening there. And it's quite complex really, it's quite a lot going on in quite a small space. And it's only that it's smaller than A4 wide. A bit of shade on each mirrored glass panel. It could be a pretty wild place having all that amount of mirror in it. <laughs> you know, in a country landscape to have all that mirror reflecting stuff, I think would be quite interesting. Um, and now if I come into the hillside behind here, I'm just going to let that not do a lot really, I think. A bit all in the, make it quite sort of painterly. We're going to want some shade in around there. so. Uh, so the sun's coming that way, so so these valleys will want to be darker, and then these are little sort of tree spinnies shadow around them. Again, I think we can make that a bit darker down here, and maybe kind of there as well. But then I think I have to make those <laughs> these roofs darker again too. So it's you put something in and then well, you have to add a bit more to something else. And then we want a little bit of sort of shade underneath those overhangs. Oh, what have we got going on in there? We can make that quite dark, I think, in there. And then we've got this little bit of hill up here. Um, and this is quite rocky. Too dark, is it? I should make it lighter, but oh, I don't know. And then we're going to want to do something like that and like that. What 
We'll shade that way. Shadow on the ground here. This is reminding me of going up a chairlift kind of thing in Japan and going up to the top of this mountain. And it was like it is outside my window at the moment, very misty. And there was a, a temple up there which was closed. And you, you could just sort of see mountains in the distance, other mountains and kind of telephone equipment on the top of them and things like that. So I don't think there's anything very Japanese about the story. I haven't got, no, I haven't got the Japanese in this, but maybe I can... I haven't got them in so far, I should say. Um, well, not obviously, so maybe... Uh, when it comes to doing a few more flags, I should have a Japanese flag. So I've had to invent this uh, thing called the the space agent, the space agency, uh, rather than NASA or ESA or the Japanese space agency or all the other agencies. So it's kind of a unified space agency, which is kind of working internationally so everybody's sort of joining in a bit like european space agency lots of different countries joining together so i'm imagining and I'm, I'm imagining that nasa is kind of at the heart of it um and so the the first book is all based here at the international space school the second story will kind of move over to the US because uh, that's where all the kind of major launch capacity is. Launch? You mean there's going to actually be a launch involved? Oh yes. You're going to have a whole new space race, which I think is actually starting to hot up already. I'm just kind of mirroring it now, I think. So I'm just going to do some little kind of scree. I think I'm going to make that a bit darker to sort of make it look different. Oh, I want that down the side as well. Um, hmm. And I think this can be made not quite so obvious there and I think just these little it's probably adding extra shadow and shading now quite sure what to do with this bit I'm do something like that that might help we want some shade behind there I think that shouldn't have done that this bit's a bit darker here to differentiate the the trees in the driveway so that you kind of should get a feeling that there's a kind of a bit of a canyon in there and something's happening with the road at the bottom of it um, I think that can be a bit darker down there too that's the thing with watercolour is it's about building and you know don't slap it on hard to start off with you can always add later but you can't really take it away that's the big problem I think maybe a bit more in here let's bring that out a bit darker behind there I think we might need to make this a little bit darker there and of course also these trees I didn't think of that these trees should be kind of reflected in there as well shouldn't they so, so I'll do that like that and maybe I can make these little characters just that little bit darker so that you sort of become a bit more aware of them like that put that across the front there and I think that is going to do me for the moment and I'll scan that and start working on the book and actually fit that in and see how it looks. 
Well, I think I thought I was recording commentary, but anyway, I've uh, scanned this in and then just spent a little bit of time cleaning it up. We've got little spots like that. And, and you can see there also that it's uh, there's that kind of white patch where I've painted over that. And we want to get rid of that grey in the background. There's a kind of a grey on the scan. So I'm using layers just to kind of lift lift out the, the lower bright areas and just get that sort of grey mess out because we don't want that turning up on the page because then you'll get a kind of a grey line across the page. We want we want the white to be white on, on these illustrations for the print. And then I didn't like these bits of scree either so I'm just painting those out as well. Uh, and <laughs> I'm using kind of replace colour so I'm taking a, a sample of the background and then painting with that sample so you get still get the texture rather than just painting with a flat colour on the top and then I'm going to drop that scan right into InDesign where the, that was the title page a half title page so this will now be the title page and I'm just going to drop that in there and then I have to kind of reshape it and fit it so that it sort of fits in there nicely. I think it's actually slightly big at the moment, so I'm going to need to shrink it down a bit. I must have done it slightly bigger size. In fact, yes, the, the, the book that I was marking it from is actually slightly bigger than the one uh, that I'll actually be illustrating in. And I want to get those two wings of the main building neatly on, the, on that page there. Then I put it into preview mode uh, so you get all the, the stuff from the outside has gone um, and so it's called Generation Moon and I've got that um, logo uh, that is the flight badge and now I'm kind of putting this in um, as the title page so this is all still a bit preliminary I'm just sort of trying things out I haven't settled on that typeface yet or anything and I'm copying that and Going to paste it into there. Now we're just going to want a bit of sort of place text placing there, just to sort of get the feel of you know where it's all going to go. 2022, it'll actually be 2023. I'll be wanting. Oh, maybe that go. There we are. Now one thing about, <laughs> about books when you're asked to sign them. So quite often I'll, I'll sort of design a book as much as I can and do the illustration. And then, and then it'll go off to the publisher's art department, and, and mind you, I've done it the same myself. So, oh, that's a nice title page, or like, you know, whatever. <laughs> when it actually comes to signing the book, <laughs> you think, oh, where am I going to do that? So here, I'm, I'm thinking about where I'm actually going to sign it. Now, also, I'm going to be crowdfunding the first edition. It's going to be a limited edition of probably around about 500, I think, signed and numbered every single book. And so I need to uh, copy that and paste that in there and retype that there. Uh, so that it says something like limited edition. And so the first edition is going to be far more fancy. And it's going to have sort of shiny stuff on the front and or, or varnish on the front, spot varnish. And uh, it's going to have sprayed edges. So when all three books come together, they make a picture on the edges, which is going to be pretty cool. So there we go. I've got that placed in there. So thanks for watching and make sure you are subscribed to the She Ran a Drawing channel to keep tabs on this whole project as it goes along. In the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, 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 writing books and doing whatever you're doing. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.